Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Uh, this is the fourth episode of the AWS Solutions Architect Pro series on the V Brown Bags. Uh, today, we will be covering Domain Three Deployment Management with Conrad Swappa. Uh, you can follow Conrad on Twitter as uh, well. Yeah, I jumped ahead on me there. I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. At, at, it's it's all right. We're we're still figuring these things out. As uh, at at Klapa underscore Conrad. Uh, before we dive in, uh, just a few notes on how to join the conversation. Uh, since we are not doing these live, there's no raise hand, there's no uh, whatever. But if you go ahead and, and either ping one of our brown bag hashtag or brown bag accounts or brown bag hashtags on Twitter, um, we also uh, yes, these aren't live, but we do have uh, live recordings in just about every every geo, every time zone, uh, and in various languages. Now uh, we're in. Oh, I'm going to screw this up. We, I know we have a Spanish language one, and then we have a Portuguese. Portuguese, that's the yep. And Portuguese yep. has been taken off like wildfire. Um, and then uh, this month, in at least in the U.S. brown bags, uh, we've got some automation. We've got some uh, vSphere six seven APIs with PowerShell. We've got uh, uh, VRA use cases, automated uh, automated VRA deployments, and so forth. Um, so go ahead and uh, feel free to join us. And uh, with that, I'm going to hand the floor over. Oh, I also forgot to introduce my, my other host today, uh, Chris Williams. Hey, everybody. <laughs> when you get rusty at this, you know, it, it all goes out the window. Now, now that you're back in the saddle, Cody, it's, uh, it's great to have you back. <laughs> uh, I mean, for certain values in the saddle. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, I will, uh, I will stop sharing and kick this over to Mr. Conrad. Okay, thanks. You. Thank you, guys. Um, let me share the screen. And okay. uh, while that's switching over, do you mind uh, giving us a, a couple sentences about yourself? Yeah, I will. I definitely will. Uh, hello, everyone. So welcome to the AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional Series. Um, as the guy said, we're going to talk about the domain free uh, deployment management. Um, so my name is uh, Konrad Swapa. I'm a hybrid cloud automation architect I'm working for Atos IT Services. Um, I'm mainly coming from the VMware background, uh, however, we're switching our focus to hybrid cloud right now. Um, so I'm sort of a certification junkie, as you can see. So um, <laughs> yeah, I've uh, done most of the VMware certi certificates. Uh, I'm WVCDX uh, in the domain of uh, cloud automation and management, and also data center virtualization. And as I said, uh, I'm focusing on AWS right now. Um, so just something that might be interesting for you, as I know we are uh, going very global with the brown bags. Uh, that's where I live, somewhere around here, um, Central Europe. Um, as I, as guys said, um, if you have any questions, feel free to connect uh, on LinkedIn or ping me on Twitter. Okay, um, I want to make a short disclaimer here uh, for. Mm, the series uh, and especially for my episode uh, I've realized that domain free is quite um, quite broad um, so I would really encourage you just not to listen to this the brown bag uh, series but also um, look at the documentation that I'm referring to and also uh, have some hands-on experience so use your free tier and use the technologies that we're going to talk about today Okay, um, so the domain three is about deployment management. Um, so it's about the ability to manage the life cycle of application on AWS. Um, we need to demonstrate the ability to implement the right architecture for development, testing, and staging environments. Um, so basically what we will be looking here at are three technologies, Elastic Beanstalk, Opwork, Opswork, and CloudFormation. So um, what I'm trying to show here um, is that those technologies require different level of knowledge when it comes to AWS uh, in general, and it offers different flexibility. And they're also uh, directed at diff on different audience. Um, so Elastic Beanstalk, I would say that um, that's the easiest one to use. Um, and it's... Um, actually constructed for the developers. So you can deploy your application. That's a past solution. Um, you don't need to have um, a lot of knowledge about the AWS infrastructure. Um, and you can deploy your 
application quite easily. Uh, what's interesting, um, if you look at when you're deploying your Beanstalk uh, environments, you will see that it's actually using CloudFormation in the backend. Um, so you can, well, from here, you can understand it's much less flexible, doesn't offer you as much as CloudFormation does. Uh, the next technology is ops work. So it's uh, basically configuration as code uh, technology. Mm, so it's, um, you can treat it as a manage chef uh, solution. Um, so you, you basically uh, can use either your own cookbooks or the predefined cookbooks to deploy your infrastructure and application. And then we're um, ending up with CloudFormation, which is the most flexible. You can work with almost all the services that are there with AWS. If not, then you have some workarounds to use APIs and so on. Um, so as I said, the most flexible one. Okay, starting with the CloudFormation, which is uh, a major topic on this exam. You should know it uh, inside out. Um, and it really um, is good to, to have some hands-on experience uh, using your free tier. You can sometimes get out of your free tier, but most of the uh, basic things uh, you can do on your free tier. So what is CloudFormation? Um, AWS CloudFormation provides a common language uh, for you to describe and provision infrastructure resources. So it would use a text file to provision all the resources it can provide across uh, different region and account. What's important, the service itself, it's, um, it has no additional charge. However, all the resources that you provision, you're gonna pay them for, pay for them. Um, even if you do, do the rollback, if something uh, doesn't go well, uh, the CloudFormation will do the rollback, but it will still charge you for the services. Um, you can also deploy your resources up to application level. Um, so on top of the templates, you can use um, Jeff and Puppet, and you also have bootstraps and helper scripts that will allow you to deploy application on your infrastructure. Um, one of the important feature of CloudFormation is that it allows you to control the lifecycle of your stacks. So basically, it's quite difficult to leave some orphaned objects when you delete the stack, all the uh, components of your stack will be deleted as well. Okay, so how does it actually work? Um, as I said, you are creating a template. It's a text file. You can store it either locally or on an S3 bucket. Um, once you have your template, um, you upload it to CloudFormation and CloudFormation takes care about uh, building the whole infrastructure you have defined in the template. Okay, number, number of services that are supported uh, by CloudFormation. So those are the major ones, those, those examples that I'm giving here. I really suggest you to go to this uh, link here. Um, let me open it. <laughs> because it changes every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can, you can notice that uh, if you subscribe to the notification from AWS about the new services, you get notifications every week. Um, so yeah, you have the full list here. I don't think that you're able to remember all that. I wouldn't. Um, what I suggest is to remember that it supports EC2, TPC with peering, S3, RDS, Route 33, and you can also uh, trigger a Beanstalk and um, uh, OpsWork uh, from um, CloudFormation. Okay, so the two major components uh, are templates and stack. So template is this text file I was talking about. So it's either YAML or JSON format. Uh, so it's the definition of your resources. So here below you see a simple template um, for EC2 instance. It's just the part of the template, but we'll have a look at the full template later on. And the stack are the actual resources that you have deployed with the template. Okay, uh, another resource, so you can see, um, you can create a lot of resources, uh, a lot of services are supported. Um, you can see here example of an elastic load balancer. Um, so you can define all the parameters you need for this particular resource uh, to deploy. Again, um, I encourage you to go um, to the Google Docs and here you can see for, for elastic load balancer, you can see all the properties. So if you open it, 
um, you can see all the uh, properties that you need to fill in uh, with some examples. You can also see if something is required. So for example, availability zone, you can see it's not a required uh, parameter, but there are some parameters that might be required. And you can do that actually for all resources. You can do that for EC2 and whatever resources you want to use uh, from AWS. Okay, uh, we'll have a closer look at the template. Um, and the template has number of attributes. Um, again, some, well, actually one of them is required, the resources attribute. So this is what is defining uh, your resource, but there are number of resources that you might want to use, you don't need to. Uh, it's very important to understand for the exam what is required, what is not required, and what they're used for. If you go to this link, guys, um, you can actually see here the description, um, what those uh, parameters are for. So the format version, this is defining the version of your CloudFormation template. Description is like auxiliary text that where you can describe what this template is deploying. Metadata, um, so this is information that you can later on refer to in your template. Um, parameters, so those are actually the input parameters uh, that you will ask the user to provide and you can use those parameters later on uh, and map them into uh, properties of your resources. You have mappings, so mappings is basically a sort of a matrix, uh, it's a key value pairs and you can translate, uh, for example, you can translate region into different kind of uh, instances, instances ID, etc. Uh, conditions allow you to define uh, whether you want to deploy a resource depending on some conditions, whether, for example, you might have a test environment and you might want to deploy um, a smaller size instance for the test environment. If it's a production environment, you, can, you might want to uh, deploy the full size uh, instance. Transfers, something to do with serverless applications. Uh, don't really need to concentrate on this for your exam. Resources, the required uh, parameter. That's where you define uh, your resource. We'll have a closer look at this later on. And the outputs, um, that's very useful. Once uh, you deploy your resources using your template, um, you, you can create some outputs. For example, uh, you can create a URL for connecting um, to your web application. Okay, um, so that's for the anatomy. Mm, you have number of intrinsic functions that you can use within the template. Um, again, it's quite essential, I would say, at least for the associate exam uh, to understand uh, some of them. Mm, so for example, base 64, this function will allow you to encode your um, and call to your uh, scripts uh, for triggering them use, using the user data. Uh, finding map, this will allow you to get the attribute from the mapping matrix uh, that, I, uh, that, that you define in the mapping uh, section. You can get, uh, get an attribute um, that would allow you to get attributes of the resources that you have already provisioned. So for example, to get an uh, IP of the EC2 instance that you uh, pr already provision. You can get availability zone, you can import value from other templates. Um, here are three functions uh, that are working on strings. So you can, uh, for example, you can use join to create a URL of a website, um, select and split. Select would uh, select a particular character or a number of characters from uh, from a string split will just simply uh, split the string and sub would get a part of um, of the string okay um, excuse me yeah. Yeah, so uh, to clarify uh, at the beginning of the section you you said uh, associate but we are talking about uh, the pro level exam yeah. yes yeah okay. yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm just um, just saying that even for those guys that okay, are okay. Uh, taking other exams it might be useful. I know that uh, myself, I'm watching the pro uh, series as well, whenever I prepare for the associates as well. So just for those folks. Excellent, um, excellent. 
Um, reference, uh, so this uh, allows you to refer um, to the parameters that are defined in the, in the input. The conditional functions, so this will again allow you to um, do some logic and you can use them in the conditions where you can check if you want to deploy, uh, if, you, if you want to deploy a particular resource or not, and you can use those conditions there. Again, um, you have this doc here. Um, I guess we can share the templates as well, sorry, the, the slides as well. So the guys have the, or, or we can put all the links under the presentation once we publish it. Okay, there are also some uh, pseudo parameters. Uh, so you can use them to get uh, region, stack ID, stack name, uh, URLs, suffix, um, so on. Um, you, you can see later in the, um, in the template that we'll be looking at that there, uh, how, how you can use them. Okay, something uh, quite important for this exam, I think, uh, the Python helper scripts. Um, so we have number of helper scripts that you can run within your EC2 instance. Um, so for example, CFN init, um, that's a script that will allow you to install packages, create files and start the services. So as part of your resources metadata, you would define the AWS CloudFormation init uh, class. And that's where you can actually define uh, your packages you want to install the groups and users that you want to create. Um, this is supported only by the Linux uh, virtual machines. Um, sources where you want to get your packages from uh, files. You can update um, existing or create new files. Uh, some comments that you can run uh, within the operating system and you can set up the services which services needs to start. Um, CFN signal, um, you can use this um, to come back with the feedback to your template, uh, to CloudFormation, to say that you have already provisioned this resource and you can feed that back to the creation policy and wait condition that you create uh, in your template. So basically those two um, will allow you to define the time that uh, you want to wait for this resource to be deployed and when you want it to time out. So when you use the signal, you will send back a feedback to the template, to, to CloudFormation, uh, that the tasks are finished and CloudFormation can continue with uh, the provisioning. Okay, again, um, two more function, CFN get metadata. So this will allow you to retrieve metadata into your operating system. And uh, when, when, you're, when you're running the um, CF init, and there's also CFN hub, uh, which will work as a service, as a daemon within your virtual machine. And it will be checking for updates in the metadata that it can update the template. Okay, uh, I would like to have a quick look at the template and we will also try to deploy one. Um, so just to, uh, a lot of theory, just want to show you how this actually works. So as I've said, we have number of parameters. Um, so those are the parameters uh, that you will uh, want the user to provide. This is actually the template for, this is an example template. Um, so this will provide, uh, sorry, provision WordPress single instance. Uh, so what you want to create here is a WordPress instance with uh, a security group. So what you're asking uh, the user is to provide the key name. So you define the type of this parameter. Um, so as you can see, it's the class of the keeper. You also have uh, some constraints. So uh, you can actually inform the user why the value was not accepted. Uh, moment, uh, yep. could you increase the font size just a little bit? Yes, oh, of course. There we go. That's better. Great. That's better. Okay. Um, then you have the instance type again. Um, you can give the user a chance to, to use the dropdown or uh, use the allowed values. So in this, this, this way, the user won't provide you with the value that is not acceptable and uh, CloudFormation will throw an error as a sort of a validation way. Um, then you have SSH location. This is, I think, actually um, asking you from which range uh, you're able to SSH. 
then a DB name, there's a MySQL uh, database being deployed uh, in this template, asking you for the DB user. Uh, one of the important thing, no echo through, uh, won't throw your variables into the console. I think it's quite important thing to do. Uh, DB password again, and DB root password, quite similar. Okay, right. here we have mappings. Um, so that's what you probably will see in most of the uh, sample templates that uh, AWS provides. So it's basically uh, mapping, allow you to map um, between the architecture, the instant type, and in the end allows you to uh, map your region to uh, EMI. So depending on your architecture and region, uh, the mm, cloud form will be able to show you, uh, to, to tell um, which, um, which uh, MI it needs to use. Okay, I'll close the parameters, um, close the mapping. And finally, uh, the most interesting part, the resources. Um, so let's make it a little bit smaller. So uh, we create the security group. Again, uh, to find out what you need to put here, uh, you should use uh, docs. You can find out which parameters are required. In this case, we're defining the, uh, which port are allowed, uh, on which port you, you allow um, to connect to uh, our instance. And you, you, had, uh, you had mentioned this before, but I think it's worth repeating again. Um, in, in the resources section, you can actually use other CFTs as, as your resources. So you can, you can actually use them as a building block for other CFTs and, and snap, snap things together to create new, uh, new infrastructure as code. Yeah, that's correct. I think that actually uh, AWS saying is the best practice to do it this way um, so that you can decouple it and... Uh... You, you embed one um, one cloud formation template into other. Yeah, it's super cool. <laughs> um, okay, um, so the next resource, let's close the um, security group. Now we have the web server. So as we can see, it's the type of EC2 instance. Um, and I was showing before, we have the metadata. So this metadata allows you to um, put uh, some parameters that will then tell the, um, the Python script what needs to be run. And so the first thing you, uh, you set is the config sets. So this uh, shows you what is supposed to be run. Uh, then you have the install CFN. So it says uh, what files need to be modified and populated. So the, basically the configuration of the Python scripts. Um, what service needs to be run? So this is the CFN uh, hub service that I uh, was talking about before. Then we're installing WordPress. Um, so the, using the packages uh, syntax. So you can see all those services, PHP, PHP, MySQL, and so on uh, will be installed. And in the L we have configuration. So configuration is using a number of comments um, to set up your MySQL passwords and well, create the data, database and so on. So you can see that uh, there are actually a number of intrinsic functions being used here. So for example, um, FN join, um, you have the reference to the root password. So that, that will be the password that the user is providing. Uh, what else do you have? Yeah, I think basically uh, that's it. Okay, so if we close the metadata, uh, we have the properties again. So those properties uh, like image ID, instance type, uh, there, most of them are coming from the inputs and also there is some mapping done, as I said before, um, that we know which um, image ID is supposed to be provisioned based on your region and architecture. And this is where the magic happens. Um, so the user data, so again, you're using the bootstrap, bootstrap script. So you need to encode it into base64. Um, then you use the join uh, intrinsic function. And you're, what you're basically saying is that you're running this um, CFN in it. Uh, you run all the configs 
that were defined before with the WordPress install. And then you're waiting uh, for this operation to finish. So you're checking whether this operation was successful or not. If it's successful, uh, then a signal is being sent to the wait condition and uh, well, the, your, your template won't uh, timeout. So here we have the, this creation policy that is actually uh, assigned to this uh, web server. So it's saying it's basically waiting for 15 minutes. So if this operation, well, both the provisioning and the um, uh, operation of uh, installing and configuring fails in 15 minutes, then the rollback will happen. And the output, uh, again, as I was saying, this is, uh, mm, this is allowing you to provision the HTTP, uh, that, well, basically the URL to connect to your WordPress uh, server. Okay, uh, I'm not sure how we are going with the time, guys. How much have we spent? Uh, right now we're at 12.05, we got uh, plenty of time. Okay, that's great. So uh, this gives me some time to do some hands-on. Yeah, uh, live, live but, demos, what could go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I still have some uh, backup slides if it doesn't work, but should go good. Is, is this one of the, uh, the, the quick templates from, uh, from the AWS website? Yes, exactly. So if, if it goes wrong, it's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's the point. Um, so this is actually, um, yeah, um, that's, that's good that you're mentioning this. So there are actually a number of templates that you can download from um, AWS. And this is really good to do reverse engineering and learn uh, cloud formation. So I uh, also uh, have a link there. So guys, uh, I really encourage you download and play with it. Um, you, at, at least you, you know that it should be working. Uh, so you are, you, you are saving a lot of time. So this will be the- I have just like this one. <laughs> ah, okay, great. <laughs> um, so WordPress single instance. So what, what I have actually done, I just create, uh, I'm trying to create a, a new stack and I'm not going to uh, use uh, S3. I'm going to use my local repo. So I chose the template I want to deploy. Yeah, uh, some parameters that uh, we need to put here. We'll just uh, create, I hope I don't have such a stack name. Let me do something else. Let me put my, I'm sure I don't have it. Mm, and those are the parameters that uh, we were looking at uh, in the template. You can see uh, that CloudFormation is asking me for the passwords, for the DB user, for the instance type. So I suggest to go to T, to T Micro. This is the default one that they were showing us. You have a drop down, but you can always define the default. Um, you need to define the key name. So you should be ready to have your um, keeper existing already and for the purpose we will allow to connect from uh, from everywhere okay let's go next um, number of options so of course as uh, every other resources in aws you can use the tax um, you can assign emi roles uh, to your instances um, you have some monitoring type you can actually set up some alarms. So if you have uh, already uh, an ARN available, you can use it here. Um, some advanced topic. Um, so you can uh, subscribe for not if you, sorry, not subscribe, you can actually connect that to an SNN topic if you uh, have one existing. You can create a termination protection just in case that you, uh, you don't want anyone to delete your stack. Um, you can set a timeout. You can have um, rollback, so set the rollback scenario. So by default, um, if anything fails in the stack provisioning, there will be automatic uh, fail, uh, rollback. But if you want to troubleshoot something, maybe it's worth uh, setting that to no, just for troubleshooting purposes. And you also have stack policies, which are uh, defined in uh, JSON. Don't think that it's a topic for uh, solution architect exam. 
Okay, as usual, review of all your settings, and there we go. We can start praying right now. So um, here in this console, um, you can see the progress. So each of the resources that are being provisioned uh, will be shown here. Um, as you can see, I actually played with Elastic Beanstalk before. Uh, so Elastic Beanstalk also is using CloudFormation in the backend. So it's giving you a nice GUI, uh, but in the backend they're using CloudFormation to provide to provision the resources. Okay, this is quite a simple, uh, quite a simple template. So it shouldn't take uh, a lot of time. I think it's about uh, two to three minutes. Um, so a, a couple of the ways that we can watch it being spun up is we can uh, jump back into the uh, the EC2 environment, right? And, yeah. Uh, and, see, and see things being peeled off. Yeah, you can do that um, here. I think I think the console is quite uh, quite good in a way. Um, yeah, let me duplicate this and uh, we can do it as well. You can see your EC2 instances uh, being spin up. It's uh... that's right. Yeah, so wow, let me check where this is the. So uh, basically the security group has been, has been created and now there is the creation of um, our EC2 instance. I guess that's the, this is the one initializing right now. Still doesn't have the name. Okay, uh, I mean, this is going to take, uh, um, take its time. I think we can switch uh, to the presentation unless you guys have uh, any questions. I mean, uh, if you're watching some other online training, this would be where they say, well, I'm gonna pause the recording for this to come up, but uh, <laughs> I don't think we're actually gonna pause the recording. Um, while we were talking about this, I, I did wanna note that like uh, CloudForms or CloudForms templates have become uh, sort of like the, the Cisco command line where like other vendors emulate the, the functionality and a lot of the, uh, a lot of the commands and the command structure and so forth. So it, it should be like becoming familiar with this for the exam is really great. Uh, but it will also help you as you work on or, or talk to and, and play with other systems. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I wish, uh, I wish I had uh, similar functionality for, uh, via life automation, <laughs> like cloud uh, formation. That's a really great tool. Um, it's also uh, it's also integrated with a number of um, other services. So, for example, uh, ServiceNow itself um, has a very good integration with uh, cloud formation. So, we can talk to it and create um, CIs whenever you create resources for cloud formation. So. Quite a good tool. Okay, guys, I think we will uh, continue. We'll have a look at this uh, again in a minute. Sure. Uh, we'll continue with other topics. Okay, uh, so these are my backup slides in case something goes wrong, but uh, I think we covered that. Um, one of the things, one we will, once we will finish, um, you can see that you can, uh, once you provision your stack, you can actually update it. So again, uh, it's, it's quite a similar drill. So you would upload uh, a template to CloudFormation and you will just deploy everything uh, from scratch. Okay, um, I have some uh, tips for the exam. So again, read the documentation, FAQs. I think the CloudFormation is quite a big topic, even though I think this domain is 10% of the, worth 10 of the exam. Um, I expect that CloudFormation would be the biggest topic from the deployment management uh, domain. Um, use your free tier, uh, download the templates, have a look at the templates, make sure that you understand uh, what the parameters are and which of them are required. Make you familiar with the um, intrinsic function. And I would also suggest to make yourself familiar with the syntax itself. 
Um, make yourself familiar with the services. Mm, so remember about the most important one, um, but um, I think it's still worth going through all of them. At least myself, uh, I have this some sort of, uh, I can remember the stuff that I looked at. Um, maybe just note down uh, some of the services that you think are the most important. Remember which of the parameters are required. So that would be resources. You can't provision um, from a template if you don't define the resources. Remember that you can provision VPC uh, with peering. Um, you can integrate with Chef, Puppet, uh, and you can use Bootstrap script. Um, the default behavior of the CloudFormation template is to roll back. Um, you can use the wait condition and the policies uh, to wait for resources to be provisioned if you have some dependencies. Um, you can use source code control. So you can use Git to uh, store your templates and, and version them. Yeah, and as I said, uh, get, your familiar with, get yourself familiar with intrinsic functions and helper scripts. Okay, before we switch to Upwork, ops work, uh, let's see if our uh, template is provision. So yep, yeah, that we go. Uh, we have our deployment finished. So it was created. Uh, now you can go to EC2 console. Let me refresh this. Yeah, it's up and running. So for all of those resources, um, I think it's also important that uh, both for ops work, Beanstalk and cloud formation, you actually have access to underlying resources. So you can connect to the EC2 instances uh, that you have provisioned. Okay, great. So let's switch now to ops work. Um, so ops work has a number of solutions that uh, it offers us. So it has ops work stacks, ops work for chef automation, ops work for uh, Puppet Enterprise. Those two are actually Chef and Puppet managed services. So uh, you can deploy a managed Chef or Puppet service. That's not something we're going to concentrate here on. We're going to talk about ops work stacks. Okay, so basically it's a configuration management service. So it's a configuration as a service. It's implementation of, uh, of, of Chef. It allows you to create stacks with different layers. You can provision uh, load balancing databases and application. And it also allows you to uh, scale on, uh, based, based on either the schedules or a load uh, that your uh, virtual machines are taking. Okay, so this is a sort of implementation like a GUI for Chef. Um, however, it has, you need to understand there are two components into it. So you have the uh, ops work agent, which is installed on your virtual instance. And this is what's uh, doing the actual work on your uh, operating system, installing uh, services and application. And you have ops work automation engine. So this engine would be talking um, to AWS um, and provision the AWS resources. Okay, uh, so the major components that we have here those are stacks, layers, instances, and apps. So what is stack? The stack is um, like a logical representation of your infrastructure, like a whole entity. So maybe you want to have, um, you manage all your uh, components in, um, from, one, from one place. That's where you will be defining the operating system that you will be using, etc. cetera. Um, the layer is actually defining how you set up and configure a set of instances and related resources. After you have your layers, you can assign uh, and you can assign and create instances. Uh, so you have a choice of either 24/7 instances or load balance uh, instances. Um, and also you can uh, deploy a specific uh, app. <laughs> okay, sorry guys, there's someone uh, calling uh, the door. <laughs> wow, that is a that is quite a doorbell. <laughs> yeah. Um, are we able to pause or? I guess not. Nope. Okay, it's gone. Okay. 
um, because uh, uh, you, you paused the recording? I, I did not pause it. No, no, it's, it's, still, it's still running. Okay. I, I, can I can clip stuff out too. It's not a big deal. Uh, okay, sorry, because that's uh, the delivery. So probably it's, a, it's quite funny because before uh, I got my, I got my uh, laptop rebooted because of the app Windows updates. So. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, hopefully they're gonna make it. Okay, so um, mm, let's talk about the, the stacks. So we have uh, three different type of stacks. Uh, you have a sample stack, you have a Chef 12 stack and Chef 11 stack. Um, so for you, you, can, you can begin with the sample stack. So it will allow you to deploy, a, as far as I remember, node uh, JS application. Uh, you can use the Chef 11 where you can um, deploy predefined uh, cookbooks that AWS offers. So we have number, um, you have number of cookbooks available and you can use Chef 12 where you define your uh, own or own cookbooks or you can use the community cookbooks. Okay, um, so then we have the layer. Uh, so as we said, uh, it's a, like a Again, like a container representing the stack components, such as load balancers and application uh, or your e EC2 instances. Um, what's important, the layer, uh, each, each instance need to uh, be assigned to at least one layer, but it can be also assigned to different layers. So we can apply different cookbooks uh, as the cookbooks are applied on the uh, layer level. Okay, um, and uh, that's an example of the instance. Um, so you, you have three types of, of layers. You have the ops work layer, which allows you to deploy different, um, different type of servers. Um, you have ECS and RDS. Those, those one will allow you to use already existing uh, cluster or RDS uh, databases. So as you see, you have different kinds of servers here uh, in the layer type, in the ops work uh, layer. So you can deploy a load balancer, you can deploy PHP app server, you can also deploy MySQL server, etc. Okay, um, so the instances uh, that you create, uh, they represent um, EC2 instances. Uh, what's important, uh, they can be deployed to multiple zones but they can't be deployed to multiple regions. Um, you have three types of them, 24-7, uh, that are always running. You have uh, time-based time instances and load-based instances. So also depending on the type of stack you choose. So this is uh, the Chef 11. You can deploy only number of operating systems. Um, I think with Chef, with Chef 12, you have also options of deploying Windows um, Server to 2012. So here you can see that um, ops work actually is not as flexible as CloudFormation. So you have some constraints, you, you need to take them into account upfront. Okay, what are the application? Um, so the application, they represent the code store. Uh, so basically what you deploy on, on top of your um, servers. So you can mm, download your application from different sort of repositories. What's supported is Git, uh, Supervision, HTTP, Archiver, and S3. Um, you can also do a life cycle uh, of your layers. So depending on the life state of your layers, uh, you can run different recipes. So you have a setup layer, configuration, deploy, undeploy, and shutdown. Uh, all those layer, oh, sorry, all those life uh, cycle events, um, you can actually, uh, the description of them, you can look here. But I, I can say that a setup is when you provision the virtual machine, the configuration is when you collect, uh, connect it to Elastic IP, or you connect, connect it to um, Elastic Load Balancer. Um, deploy won't happen when you're deploying the application undeploy when you're undeploying the application and shut down when you're uh, shutting down your instances. Um, so there might be a number of use cases to use those. Um, yeah, basically I suggest go to the docs uh, and have a look at it. Well, when you're deleting the stack, uh, you need to remember that um, you just can go 
and click uh, delete the stack, you need to delete your um, instances first and the layers. And also um, what I've seen, the security groups are not being deleted. Um, so <laughs> you can see this uh, quite easily when you use the new region that you have never used before. You create your new stack and you will see after you delete uh, the whole stack, you will see you have a number of security groups um, sitting there. So it's not like CloudFormation that it will remove all the resources. Um, it has provision. Okay, uh, some exam tips. So again, uh, use your free tier, hands-on experience, uh, very important. Remember the differences between the stack layer, uh, re recipes uh, and apps. Um, remember that when you choose the VPC and region, uh, when you're provisioning your stack, you can't change it afterwards. Um, that might be quite uh, important tip for the exam. Uh, remember the type of stacks and type of instances. Mm, remember that you can uh, trigger your ops work from CloudFormation. Um, the lifecycle events are supported. Remember what um, lifecycle states are there. And remember that you can use JSON uh, to pass some parameters to the receipts. We haven't actually uh, showed that before, but when you're provisioning uh, where you're creating the stack or layer, you can define the JSON with number of parameters and you can use them uh, to send them to your receipt, uh, recipes. Okay, uh, the last topic, maybe the most enjoyable, the most, uh, the, the, the easiest one, Elastic Beanstalk. Um, so Elastic Beanstalk uh, is used for deploying, monitoring and scale application. Um, this is focusing on software component, basically, not the infrastructure. The infrastructure is not that important here. Um, so it doesn't require um, such a deep uh, knowledge of AWS and AWS services. Uh, it's designed for developers. Um, and also remember, you can trigger Elastic Beanstalk from the CloudFormation templates. So what's the what's the drill? You, you have three components. You have application, application versions, and environments. You have two different types of environments, web server and work environment. So what you would do, you would first um, create your application, upload your application uh, to Beanstalk. So you, have no, you can have number of versions uh, in Beanstalk. Um, you let your environment uh, deploying your application and then once you have new version of application, you can upload it and deploy it again uh, to an environment. So this is, uh, I think, coming from AWS documentation. I think it's perfectly showing what uh, Elastic Big Stock can do for you. So uh, perfect use case. You have the web server uh, here that uh, can be part of the auto scaling group. So we can scale it uh, depending uh, on number of parameters as auto scale. Uh, does um, and you have worker environment so those two environments uh, the the instances that you will deploy in those two environments will vary so this would be a web server and those instances uh, by default they have sqs uh, daemon installed which allows you to consume a queue and you can actually um, use a queue that already exists or you can provision a queue so this is very useful for uh, decoupling or loosely coupling your application uh, using SQS queues. Um, what you can do um, in the work environment, you can also use uh, CloudWatch um, to monitor your SQS uh, queue. And once it's uh, growing too much, uh, then you can provision additional instances. Okay, uh, another use case uh, for um, Beanstalk is the blue-green deployments. Mm, so you can deploy your blue environment and once you're ready with new version, you can deploy another environment where you can deploy a new version of your application. It's actually very simple. So you upload your application using either zip or uh, var um, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's imported to the folder wherever you want. So you can test your application. And once it's tested, you can simply go to Beanstalk and swap the environment's URLs. So this will allow you to um, move the URL from this 
environment to this environment. So quite, well, it's, it's quite simplistic, uh, but I think for simple use cases might be useful. Okay, this is how the deployment looks like. Uh, we won't go into hands-on. Um, I think it's all, you can all just use all this in, the, in your free tier, shouldn't be a problem. So uh, what you would do, you would create a, uh, create a web application. You give just the application name and then you choose your platform. So there are a number of platforms that are supported. We'll look at this in a moment. And you just create your application. So it will create uh, the whole stack for you. Um, and then it's, you just need to upload your code. Once you deploy your application, you can create additional environments and well, for different purposes, either you, uh, you, can, you can have a work environment if you require this, or you can create your blue, uh, blue deployment environment if you want to, to switch, switch it after testing. Okay, the console, uh, very simple, but uh, I would say quite powerful. Uh, so you, you have a number of options here. Um, some configurations, so you can configure uh, load balancing here, you can connect, uh, co um, connect databases, etc. You can see the logs, uh, some uh, basic health checks, uh, you can see the monitoring of your instances. Uh, and as I said, you can actually, the instances that you provisions can be managed by, your, by yourself, so you can log into your instance uh, either uh, using, using SSH and when it changes, if you need, I wouldn't see a reason to do it, but well, because that's uh, so simplistic and it, it needs to be easy to implement. Um, have alarms, uh, you can manage your updates. So actually you can upload your applications here. Uh, so this would just pick up um, your application from your local repository and upload it to the Beanstalk. Um, it's working pretty fast. And then you have events and, uh, and talks. Okay, uh, something that you need to remember for the exam, supported platforms. Again, <laughs> go to the website before your exam. I don't know when you will be taking your exam, but it's always uh, the best to get up-to-date data. So go, go to the docs and check which of those uh, platforms are supported. Maybe there will be some more. Um, one more tip, uh, if something is not supported here, you can still use Docker. Uh, to use um, some unsupported platforms. Okay, uh, some AWS resources that you can use. So there is um, ELB, RDS, and SQS. And one of the best practices is to use RDS out, uh, to create RDS outside of Beanstalk um, because you can actually uh, delete your database when you're deleting your uh, environment. Create it outside and then attach to it via yeah. via the via the Beanstalk commands. Um, yeah, you can you can do it here or you can uh, well you can do it via the comments. So you're you're talking about the CLI, right? Yeah, yeah. But you can use CLI or you can just use the GUI as well. Uh, okay, cool. Configuration and assign it there. Okay, and finally uh, the tips for lasting Beanstalk. Um, there uh, maybe a little bit more than for the other services. So. Um, you can store your logs in S3. You can also use S3 for keeping your application data. You can provision RDS instances, and you can actually use environmental variables um, so that your application knows uh, where to connect. You can, again, use multiple zones, uh, but you can't use multiple regions. So um, again, that's quite a trade-off. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not being able to use uh, multiple regions, uh, both in, uh, being stuck well i mean i'm talking about the out, out of the box functionalities um if, if you could do it from gui uh, i'm sure you can do some workarounds uh, and use those services in different regions and connect them but uh from from the gui out of the box you can just use multiple zones um you have root access to the underlying resources uh so remember all the services have it um all your application can be published to the internet. So when you have the, when you're deploying the web server, it, it gets the um, internet connection. You can uh, your your application is exposed to internet. Um, it supports uh, AMI, 
uh, it supports uh, VPC. You can store your code in S3. Um, you can actually do rollbacks. Um, as far as I remember, the, it stores like five versions of your application. Uh, so we can roll back uh, five version before. Um, it supports uh, Linux AMI and Windows 2012 R2. Um, you can actually store your code in Git and ES, um, EPS CLI actually allows you to deploy your application directly from Git. And something that might, uh, you might be asked in the exam as well are the EBS extensions. Um, so this is, this is basically a folder that you would put in your application and that's where you can define uh, the resources that you want to deploy in AWS. So there is some flexibility in this. Um, you can use. We won't get, um, we won't be doing any deep dive into EBS extensions. I don't think that's required uh, for the exam itself but well, it's worth to know. Okay, guys, um, that's it from me. Um, awesome. You can, as I said, you can contact me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Also, here's my email. If any questions, don't hesitate. Just write. Awesome. Well, uh, I guess that, uh, that wraps us up for, for today. Uh, episode four, AKA domain three of, or domain three part one of, uh, is it, are we doing two parts? I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> oops. No, that's it. That's the whole domain free. We covered it all here. Yeah. We got all Outstanding. Cool. All right. So yeah, uh, that covers it for episode four, domain three of the AWS SA pro exam. Uh, Join us, uh, join us on the next one. We'll review all of our prior episodes uh, via YouTube um, or uh, vbroadbag.com. Thanks again, and uh, thank you, Conrad.